Evidence-Based Management of Postpartum Infection. This is an outline of our presentation today. We'll start off by giving a brief introduction to postpartum infections. In particular, we will discuss endomyometritis, wound infection, urinary tract infections, and mastitis, with a focus on their etiology, associated risk factors, signs and symptoms, and management. General risk factors for postpartum infection include caesarean delivery, prolonged rupture of membranes, urinary catheterization, diabetes, group B strep infection, anemia, and obesity. The first postpartum infection we will discuss is endomyometritis. Endomyometritis is a polymicrobial infection of the uterine lining and underlying wall. Risk factors for developing endomyometritis include lower segment caesarean section, manual removal of the placenta, retained products of conception, chorioamnionitis, and premature rupture of membranes. Patients present with fever and uterine tenderness, typically 5 to 10 days following delivery. Because retained products of conception can be the etiology of infection, ultrasound is often obtained to examine the intrauterine contents. Full blood count and C-reactive protein are also routinely done. Usually treated with broad-spectrum intravenous antibiotics such as second-generation cephalosporins. If products of conception are identified on ultrasound, dilatation and curatage is performed. Antibiotics are continued until the patient is afebrile for 48 hours. Uterine pain and tenderness are absent and white blood cell count is normal. The routine use of antibiotics has proven to be beneficial in high-risk obstetric patients with postpartal endometritis. For example, patients with prolonged labor or prolonged rupture of membranes. Postpartum wound infections are one of the most common complications. They occur in 3 to 15% of caesarean skin incisions and 0.1% are perineal lacerations or episiotomy sites. Most often, the etiologic organisms associated with wound infections are skin flora, including Staphylococcus or Streptococcus species, and gram-negative organisms as in endometritis. Signs and symptoms of wound infection usually occur four to seven days later. These would include fever, erythema around the wound site, particularly if it's associated with tenderness, and warmth. Purulent discharge from the wound site is a telling sign. If the infection does not respond to antibiotics and persistent fever, or there is a fluctuant collection within the wound site, an abscess should be suspected. Treatment entails proper wound cleaning and care. Abscesses must be incised, drained, and properly cleaned and dressed, as a delay may lead to necrotizing fasciitis. Patients should be treated with broad-spectrum antibiotics with a focus on covering skin flora. Before giving broad-spectrum antibiotics, a wound culture swab should be obtained to determine the causative organisms and the antibiotic sensitivity profile so that definitive antimicrobial therapy can be implemented. Finally, as a preventive measure, prophylactic antibiotics should be given for all caesarean sections. Urinary tract infections often result from urinary catheterization during and after labor. Catheterizations are required for epidural and spinal anesthesia to avoid urinary retention. Urinary tract infections can travel up to involve the bladder and the kidneys, causing cystitis and pyelonephritis. Symptoms include urinary frequency, dysuria, flank pain, costovertebral angle tenderness, suprapubic tenderness and fever. Diagnosis is made by urinalysis and urine culture. Treatment consists of trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, nitrofurantoin, fluoroquinolones. These drugs are safe to use in breastfeeding mothers. Nevertheless, care should be taken to avoid breastfeeding the infant within four hours of taking the drug to minimize exposure. Mastitis is a regional infection of the breast, which is caused by the mother's skin flora or baby's oral flora. These bacteria can penetrate through cracked nipple 
and proliferate, causing symptoms of infection. Commonly, lactating women will have warm, diffusely tender and firm breasts, especially at the time of breast engorgement and milk letdown. These are the normal signs and are not signs of mastitis. The infection typically presents with focal tenderness, erythema, and differences in temperature from one region of the breast to another. Mastitis might also be complicated by formation of an abscess. Mastitis is diagnosed by physical examination of the breasts. Fever and elevated white cell count are common. Mastitis is treated with oral antibiotics. It is worth noting that a patient should continue breastfeeding as it helps to remove bacteria from the breast. If breastfeeding is not possible, then the patient should pump breasts in acute phase of the infection. If oral therapy fails, then IV antibiotics should be started until the patient is afebrile for 48 hours. If this fails, then an abscess should be suspected and confirmed by imaging studies. The abscess is treated with incision and drainage. Brought to you by Learning in 10.